Let's take a look at the parallel circuit shown. We're asked to find the current flowing through the 30 ohm resistor, let's call that R1, the power dissipated in the 20 ohm resistor, we'll call that resistor 2, and the voltage drop across the 10 ohm resistor, R3. To begin our analysis, we'll do the same thing we did for our series circuit. We'll make our VERP table, showing our different circuit elements, our resistors, R1, R2, and R3, as well as the total for our rows. And across the top, our columns, voltage, current, resistance, power. And those are all in SI units. So voltage is in volts, current is in amps, resistance is in ohms, and power is in watts. Now we'll just complete our table and then fill in right away what we already know from the circuit. Pretty easy to see right away the values for our resistances. R1 is 30, R2 is 20, and R3 is 10. And we can also see that the total potential difference in our circuit is dictated by our battery, 24 volts. Now, once we have that there, if we look, you can see right away that the potential difference across each of those three resistors is 24 volts because anything along the wire has the same potential and all of those points along the wire are all connected to the battery. The battery ensures there's 24 volts across each of those wires. So across R1 there must be 24 volts, across R2 there must be 24 volts, and across R3 there must be 24 volts. Again, that's dictated by the power supply. Once we have that, well, if you look for R1, R2, and R3, we have voltage, we have resistance, we should be able to calculate current and power fairly easily. Using Ohm's law, we can find I equals V over R. For our first case, 24 over 30 must be 0 0.8 amps. So that means 0 0.8 amps is traveling through R1. For R2, I equals V over R, 24 volts over 20 ohms, that's 1.2 amps. And for R3, 24 volts over 10 ohms, that's 2.4 amps. So that must be 2.4 amps. And that makes sense that you would get more current through the smaller resistor. Well, it's pretty easy also now to figure out what our total current flow must be. Using Kirchhoff's current law, if we look down here, we have 0 0.8 amps coming through the resistor by conservation of charge, 1.2 amps through R2, and 2.4 amps through R3. They all have to combine to go back through our circuit here. So we can add them up. That should give us a total of 4.4 amps running through our circuit as our total current. If you think of it, as you look through the top of our circuit, think of it as a large river. And each of the current streams gets divided. Some amount goes through R1, one waterfall, another amount through R2, our second waterfall, and an even greater amount through R3, our third waterfall. Then they all recombine back into the same river somewhere downstream before they go back up through our pump, our battery, and around again. Well, if you look for the total now, we have I and we have V. Using Ohm's law again, R equals V over I, we can find our total resistance or the equivalent resistance in our circuit. And what we get, R equals V over I, gives us an equivalent resistance of about 5.45 ohms. Since we're talking about resistors in parallel, it makes sense that the total resistance has to be less than any of the individual resistors in the circuit. So that works. We could also find that out using our equivalent resistance formula, which says 1 over R equivalent equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 for however many resistors you happen to have. In our case, that'd be 1 over REQ is 1 over 30 ohms plus 1 over 20 ohms plus 1 over 10 ohms. When I solve that and find R equivalent, I end up with exactly 5.45 ohms. Well, not exactly a rounded number, 5.45.
Finally, to get power, we can use any of our formulas for power, iv, v squared over r, or i squared r. In each case, we would get 19.2 watts, 28.8 watts, 57.6 watts, and a total 105.6, which we could get by multiplying i times v, or we could add up the individual powers of all the components. Either way, we get 105.6 watts. So to answer the questions that we were initially asked, A, we wanted to know the current through the 30 ohm resistor. Current through the 30 ohm resistor, I just look up. For our 30 ohm resistor, that's our one, the current was 0 0.8, so that's 0 0.8 amps. B asked for the power dissipated in the 20 ohm resistor, that's R2, so the power in R2 was 28.8 watts. And finally, we were asked to find the voltage drop across the 10 ohm resistor. The 10 ohm resistor is R3, the voltage drop is 24 volts.